We are the volunteers for WCTV, and tonight we have a very, very special show. We are going to preview the 2015 Boris County Champ uh, Tournament. We call it the Jamboree, and John Francola is here with me to go over the selection with, our com with the committee. And John, 23 years of uh, covering the Jamboree, it's like only yesterday. We started back in 93, and here we are in um, 2015. We've seen a lot of basketball. You know, Larry, unbelievable. But anytime the Jamboree comes in, I always have to watch Who's Here. The movie, that movie was, and it, this is the only tournament that we'll ever have in, in, in the state of New Jersey that the smallest team can win the tournament. That's true, and it's, it's something that we look forward to. Uh, every year, people ask when, when it's going to be on, when it's going to be played, when are you guys going to be covering it? And we tell them it's always the end of January and all of February, and we're here. And we have the, the committee who worked so hard Wednesday night. I heard they had to shovel their way over <laughs> to the uh, school to uh, get the, uh, the, the uh, selection started. So we're going to get them from right, my right, um, from my left to my right. This is uh, Leon Steinberg, Paul Pluglis. Mm -hmm. And Ed Crown, gentlemen, we, uh, I already said goodbye to you about a day or two. That was February 27, Paul and Ed and Leon, of uh, 2014 when we uh, finished up last year's championship. And Teaneck won uh, their fourth in a row, four peats. <laughs> and uh, this year's tournament looks like uh, it's going to be wide open. It looks like it's going to be <laughs> wide open. We uh -huh. uh, we say that often, but. When you look at the numbers and you look at the, the uh, records that the teams have and how they've done against each other, uh, we think it's going to be wide open. Yeah, I know. You and I talked about it, and Ed and Leon, just jumping at, at, at any point. Uh, you, we, we watch the games. You go to all the games. We watch it and read it in the paper. And everything is moving along. Then all of a sudden, a top team gets knocked off. And that team is knocked <laughs> off by another team. And before you know it, Teams are being knocked off, and no one's going in to the Jamboree as a real, say, clear-cut favorite. That's the team that we have to beat. Any one of these teams here have a legitimate shot. Uh, I think you're on the money with that, Larry. And that's uh, we, we keep in touch with each other via text and uh, email constantly. And when an, one of those upsets occurs, uh, that's when our phones are blowing up, and uh, we, we just uh, we're either at the game or we're letting each other know. Yeah, you know, looks at this, look like this number one seed is no longer our number one seed, and uh, it it happens right up through that uh, Wednesday night selection meeting uh, for sure. Now, Leon, that's got to be uh, a two prong. That's got to be um, tough on the committee because now you have to figure out how you're going to see who's going to get in, how you're going to seed it. But when it's all done, you got yourself a tremendous tournament because now every team is smiling, saying, "You know what? If we play our A game, we got a shot." It's wide open this year, Larry. There's no clear-cut favorite. Um, I think the teams and their coaches do believe that. Um, and we have some great matchups. You, you do, and as, as you, we're going to go over, Paul, you, and, and, and you know, we're going to go over the 22 teams. You could talk a little bit about each team, as we always have done, um, and why they're there. And then we'll go over the, uh, the way the games are going to be stacked up through February and possible matchups as we finish the end of February. I think it's the 26th we, figured we finished the final at Ramapo College. But uh, it's just amazing. John and I were talking and said, look, John, uh, Bosco's number one. What they got? beat and then they, uh, uh, Hackensack beat Teaneck and we say who's number who's number one I said I don't know he, he couldn't well, tell I me. I was away and I had two weeks of newspapers that I'm going through <laughs> so I didn't know what was happening and all of a sudden geez I just saw the St. Joe's one wait a minute I just saw Bergen getting beat I said what's going on he we called gotta me. get you on Twitter John so you I get it instantaneously well. he should have <laughs> went to Twitter all right so why don't we go through 
uh, the teams that made the 2015 uh, tournament, and we'll talk starting with 22, going back to up to back to one, and just talk a little bit about each team, what they bring to the table, and why they're there. Any, anyone want to start? John, uh, 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 Larry, let me just say uh, uh, before we get started that um, uh, you know Ed and Leon and I are here, but our committee we have a six-person committee. Uh, we also have uh, Ricky Corcoran, uh, Chris Annabelle, and John Ryan. Uh, and the six of us, uh, we see hundreds of games. We see every team multiple times. We go to sometimes two games a night on the uh, weekends when they have the tournaments. We'll, we'll go to a gym and we'll be there because we all love to watch the game. Um, we also have uh, Jimmy McConville who does our stats and stuff, and he is a font of information. Uh, I want to throw a shout out to uh, Pete DeFranco, principal down in uh, Garfield, who is um, our um, assigner, and uh, Tom Curry, who's the uh, liaison to the BCCA, because the Bern County Coach Association uh, is our uh, umbrella group. Right. You know, we work for them. Okay. So uh, just to get those shout outs, and, and, and you know, uh, when, <laughs> when Ed says that our phones blow up, uh, we all pushed it. We, we're all way over the limit of our minutes <laughs> because we are texting back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, uh, talking about every team. And, uh, you know, if we want to start, we can start. Well, with just when you just to, just to finish, you start when the uh, league starts. So you're starting uh, the right after football. You're starting around the 20th of December, starting to see these, these games going right up to, I guess, Wednesday. Uh, Correct. Just watching them talking. Talking back and forth, what do you think? And that 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 probably consumes your life for that that month. Right? Our, our wives are real happy about <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah. Uh, that period. <laughs> well, you can't time. get into a fight with them. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. Right? And <laughs> as, as Paul mentioned, you know, there's there's 55 uh, high schools in uh, Bergen County, and uh, between the uh, the six members of the committee, we virtually see every one of those uh, schools play at least once throughout the course of the uh, of the regular season. And uh, he mentioned Rookie Corcoran, and we all know his. Uh, his dad, the venerable Mickey Corcoran, who's uh, one of the founding fathers of the Jamboree. And uh, the mentor tells us all the time that we're working way too hard. He's, he'll see us at a game and he'll say, you guys are just working way too hard. <laughs> so uh, we appreciate uh, his support and uh, uh, we don't think we're working hard. As, uh, as Paul said, we love it. Uh, it's, it's just a great way to spend uh, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights, and, and we do it uh, because it is a labor of love. Sure is a, it is. I was going to say that. I took the word right out of my mouth. It's got to be, for the amount of time and effort you put into it, it has to be a labor of love, that you love this, uh, love this game. And, and, you, and the big benefactors are the kids. The, the student athletes are the big benefactors here. You know what? It's all about the kids, Larry. And uh, they look forward to it. They're excited. They're really disappointed <laughs> when they're on the bubble and they don't get in. And, uh, you know, the teams that have played year after year, you get to know some of those kids because you see them on a regular basis uh, during the regular season and then in our tournament. But it really is uh, about the kids and making sure that they have a great experience. You, know, you guys do a tremendous amount of work, and it shows up in the, in the jamboree and in the seating and how it's run. Uh, we see a little bit of what you do, John and I, and it's a tremendous amount of work. And there's still more work to be done. It's not over. It's just, it's just, just, it's just the beginning. Now you've got to put this all together with the venues and move and all kinds of things that come, will come up. It's things you're not prepared for. You're going and, to have to on the fly. And right? things you don't think about. Uh, to Paul's point about Pete DeFranco, he does a great job assigning the officials. Um, we didn't know how many teams we had until Wednesday <coughs> night, and then he has to line up three officials for all those first round games that start tomorrow. Yeah. So uh, he gets a little panic stricken <laughs> at this time of year because he's only got a couple of days to put that together, but he does a wonderful job of making sure that we have the right officials on a the A lot games. of moving parts, huh? Mm -hmm. yes. A lot of moving parts. And you decided to do three referees for each game, yes. yeah, which year is good. Year before last, we had a, uh, uh, a situation where we had an alternate on some games. We played the two officials with an alternate on some games. And uh, the game, the way it's played now, you guys know this is is so fast and furious and physical that in order to really get uh, uh, you know all of the angles covered, uh, we w we went to three officials and and it certainly seems to have worked out. Uh, one other thing, you know, we had uh, 31 of the 55 schools applied uh, and uh, we took 22 of them. 
Some, and it was three, a lot. Uh, three fell out right at the end by losing yeah. the last game on Wednesday, right? Correct. And that's always the toughest part for us uh, is when, you know, Leon referred to it, when we have to tell a team that, uh, well, announce that the team is not in mm -hmm. the game, so, in the tournament. Was this uh, one of the more difficult years because of all the uh, the teams knocking each other off? Was it difficult? Not so much picking the teams, but seeding them. I, I thought that the, the biggest problem every year is the seeding, where you put them. Was that a major problem? I think uh, one, two, and three fell uh, rather easily because of their records against one another. So I think uh, as the committee worked through uh, the night of the, uh, of the seeding, one, two, and three uh, worked out to, uh, to our satisfaction pretty quick. From that point on, uh, what we did is uh, uh, we took uh, really clusters of teams and we'd put them on the board and we would uh, take, uh, for example, the, uh, the seeds uh, four, five, six, and seven, we put them all up on the board and we put uh, wins on one side, losses on the other side, common opponents, and then we just discussed and uh, you move them like, uh, like chess pieces until you're, uh, you're satisfied. And it's all done by consensus. Uh, you're sitting in the room and people are trying to justify their particular uh, feelings. And then as a group, as you move through it, uh, everybody uh, works towards a consensus uh, opinion. Okay, fine, Paul, you want to start? We'll start with, uh, with, with Rich, John? You can mention the 22 well, here they teams. Are on, yeah, there they, they, they are, right it's on there. the screen now, the uh, 22 teams. So, Paul, uh, the show is yours if you want. <clears throat> Well, I don't, I don't necessarily think I'm up for the whole thing, but um, number 22, we'll start and go down. We're going to go 22 to number one. Okay, so 22, uh, 22 is the Woodridge Blue Devils. Uh, they're out of the Meadowlands Conference in uh, the Meadowlands Division of the uh, NJIC. For our viewers, the, uh, the uh, schools in the county are divided into the Big North, which is more or less the bigger schools, and the NJIC, which is more or less the smaller schools. And the Blue Devils are coached by Eddie Renzio for several years, and I know in past shows that you guys love to watch them play because they just fly <laughs> up and down the floor. Uh, a couple of years ago, they had a 2,000-point scorer and almost another 2,000-point scorer on the same team. So they don't have any problem uh, shooting the ball. Eddie uh, talks about how he runs his offense. He starts his offense full court. It does, he doesn't start his offense when the ball crosses half court. He starts it right away. So the Blue Devils, um, let's see, they uh, lost to St. Mary's, Hasbro Heights, and Creskill in the tournament. Um, but they are always, always fun to watch. And you, sometimes you just can't believe how they're, you know, where they're shooting it from. And then you <laughs> shake your head until the ball goes in. And then you shake your head in a different direction. <laughs> I can still see right, right now. Shooting right now. At, 42-foot three-pointer. <laughs> Don't right. shoot. Oh, you made it. <laughs> yeah, he made it. <laughs> it's the old remnants of uh, Nevada, Las Vegas with uh, yes. Jerry Tarkanian. Oh, That's yes. how they like to play. They like to get after you defensively, and they want a fast-paced game. Sure. Uh, okay, so uh, number 21 is uh, Rutherford Bulldogs. And Nick Dabari is the coach. They're in the NJIC Colonial. They're 10-5 uh, and five right now. They're in third place in that division. Uh, they beat Hasbro Heights, who's in the tournament. Hasbro Heights is a very good team we'll talk about later. Uh, Rutherford's a tough team to figure out. Um, we saw them multiple times. Uh, on some nights, they look like they're unbeatable. And then another night, you, you just wonder, you know, you know what's going on. Uh, I would have a difficult time trying to prepare my team to play them. Because if I had scouted them against one team, I would get ready to do one thing. And if I saw them the next night, I might want to do something else. They have a very experienced coaching staff. Uh, Nick's uh, uh, number uh, one assistant is Tommy Potter, who's been around the county forever. And they do a real good job. So they're going to be a tough out, uh, I think, whoever they play. Number 20 is uh, mm -hmm. Cliffside Park, uh, coached by uh, Sean McIsaac. They're second in the Big North American. Um, they lost to Mawa, Englewood, and Ramsey. Uh, they don't have much size, but they're very, very quick. Um, uh, they have three or four guys that could put up double figures. Um, they're going to run. They're going to shoot. Uh, not, un not unlike uh, Woodridge. Uh, you better get back. You better be ready to play defense right away. And, um, again, another team that when you're trying to prepare, it's kind of hard to prepare for. 
They're one of those teams that uh, had to win on uh, Wednesday night to get in. They had a, a tight uh, three-point win over Lodi on uh, Wednesday night to qualify. Uh, that got them to 650, and they uh, made their way into the tournament, second year in a row. And uh, Sean is one of those uh, really up-and-coming young coaches in the in the county who I think does a, a great job, as Paul said, with a uh, a group of kids that aren't necessarily the most talented basketball players, but he gets them to play real hard, and uh, you'll know you're in a dogfight. Uh, number 19 is the Ridgefield Roy Royals, uh, James Cassiano, and. Uh, Ed and I saw them, uh, I saw them a couple times. I saw them play a great game against Hasbrook Heights. Just wanted a, a beautiful game. Very, very well coached. Tough kids. They're in the NJIC Liberty. They're in second place. Um, very well coached. Ed and I sat at the game and we just love it because um, the game now, as we said earlier, is very physical and it gets sometimes to be a lot of one-on-one -on -one and a lot of drive the ball hard to the basket and hope for something to happen. Well, when we watched Ridgefield, Ridgefield was moving the ball, they were running an offense, the coach was coaching, and the kids were playing real hard, and uh, I think they're going to be very difficult out, Ridgefield. Um, number 18, Dwight Englewood, uh, Eli Goldberger doing some things over there at uh, the prep, uh, prep school in Englewood. Uh, he is number one in the uh, Liberty Division 9-3. Uh, they lost three games uh, to Englewood, Creskill, and Rarepaul, three tough opponents. Um, they may have the best young talent in the county. They have five freshmen on their varsity roster, and uh, they aren't just on the bench. They start and score and contribute. So I think Dwight Englewood is going to be, uh, if not this year, certainly a team to watch in the future. <laughs> And the one kid on that uh, team, freshman uh, Jalen Carey, is a name that everybody's going to learn real quick because he's been uh, their leading scorer all year long and just a, a fun kid to watch play. So when you, uh, when you get a chance to see Dwight Englewood, you'll know who Jalen Carey is real quick. Uh, okay, number 17 is uh, Hasbro Kites Aviators with uh, Mike Sabula. Mike uh, is a Hasbro Kites guy. If you go to their gym, you'll see his name on the wall. He was a 1,000-point scorer for them. Uh, another one of those teams that are uh, very well coached. They move the ball. They, they uh, uh, make you play defense for a long time. Uh, they, f they force you to, to switch or, or get over the tops of screens. And they have one of the uh, nicest players in the county, a guy named uh, Keith Melenick. I hope I pronounced his name right. Uh, but he is uh, uh, a slightly built lefty who can fill it up. And... Um, uh, he, when I saw him uh, against uh, Ridgefield, John Ryan and I saw them against uh, uh, Ridgefield, he had 34 that night. He should be all county at the end of the year, for sure. Uh, uh, averaging close to 30 points <laughs> yes. a game. So. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> and uh, um, I'm sure that anybody who's preparing for them is trying to figure out how to stop him. But he's not their only guy. They have he's some other guys Rivera that could and score. Colton. Yeah, they have other guys that could score. Okay, uh, number 16, Mawa, the Mawa T-Birds, uh, coached by Michael Brannick, who I have a little affinity for. Michael played for me. Mike does a great job up there. They're out of the Big North in the Patriot Division. They're, number, uh, they're second in that uh, division. And uh, Michael's got Mawa moving in the right direction. And one of the things that if you, uh, if you look at their box score, you'll see um, – You'll see a couple of names that are very familiar to <laughs> Bergen County uh, sports fans and basketball fans. Their point guard is uh, Trembley. That's uh, the second generation of Trembley. And their big guy is Arimo, whose uh, uh, dad was a great player, quarterback up there, and whose uncle is their football coach. Um, and they play very hard. Back in the uh, tradition of uh, John Carty, uh, who got, you said about about Hoosiers and, and yeah. uh, the small schools. When, when John was coaching, he got them to a final as a small school. And they play that hard-nosed, solid, fundamental basketball. They make you work. They will box out real hard. They're going to play real good defense, and you're not going to get anything easy against, uh, against them. Um, and they have a couple. I have, they have a kid named Hill and another kid named Deer who can shoot the three, too. And they're not afraid to shoot it either. Townsend, well, John, you got all the. You got I got all, all the John names. got them all. He's John got them all. more of an inside player. <laughs> Correct. Complements those uh, three-point shooters. Yep. So, uh, 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 
Mawa again, number 16, and the the um, the 16, 17 game. I'm I'm really looking for, forward to is that that Mawa Hasbrook Heights game because you got uh, two different styles going on there, which is always nice to see how the coaches coach and what's going to happen. Uh, number 15 is um, Tenafly Tigers. Uh, Ed may be more familiar with them. Jeff Kohler out of the Big North National. And uh, Jeff is just transitioning. He's been a long time girls coach, very successful girls coach at uh, Tenafly. He takes over the boys for the uh, uh, first year. Uh, great win. Uh, their signature win uh, uh, this year is uh, Ridgewood in overtime. And uh, some tough losses in their division to uh, Bergenfield, uh, Teaneck, uh, and uh, Ramapo. Uh, they have a, a great shooter, third-team all-county, returning all-county player, Amit Yona, uh, who can uh, certainly can fill it up. And their uh, point guard, uh, Jake Spadassini, uh, who does a great job. And they have a couple of big kids uh, inside, uh, Nakia Griffin and uh, Anthony Brakefield. So uh, you know, hopefully uh, for, uh, for the Tigers, uh, you know, they'll be able to, uh, uh, to show up uh, tomorrow and uh, it's going to be a nice matchup with them, Tenafly, Dwight Englewood, because those kids all know each other real well. So it's a, it's a good first round matchup for those two clubs. And that's a team that played a real tough, tough schedule. Um, but they did, obviously, they did well enough not only to be in the tournament, but to be, uh, um, you know, in the top 16. Uh, mm -hmm. Next on the list is uh, Northern Highlands, coached by Mike Stone, and they're a perennial in the tournament. Uh, very, very tough out of the Big North Freedom Division. Very physical, tough, tough defense. Um, you better be, you know, you better, uh, you know, get yourself uh, psyched up to play them because they're going to come and they're going to uh, lean on you. They're going to push you. They're going to make you work real hard for everything. They have um, uh, two wing players, two strong guards who will shoot and. Uh, threes and drive hard to the basket. Star and Boers, uh, who uh, you know, they're uh, re most every time, most every game, you'll see their names as their leading scorers. And they got a, a couple of big guys inside, and and uh, very intense type of basketball. So you you got to bring your A game when you're going to play against uh, Northern Highlands. Uh, number thirteen on our list is Saint Mary from uh, Rutherford and uh, Brian Gassione. And Brian is, a, uh, he's a veteran. He's been around for a long time. I had the pleasure of uh, working with Brian in a couple of all-star games back when he was playing at Rutherford. They're out of the NJIC Meadowlands. Uh, and they just, they're 13 and two at this point. They beat Hasbrook Heights, uh, Tenafly, Woodridge. Their two losses are to Garfield and Englewood, both tournament teams, very experienced. Uh, they have four or five different guys that could, uh, that could score uh, not only double figures, but that could score 20. Um, and there's another name on their, on their list. Uh, there's a couple of names on their list. First of all, there's a Stone on their list, which the old coach was uh, 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 Matt Stone. But also there's um, uh, a Datica yeah. on their list. Who's a freshman? You must have about ten kids at Daticas. Yeah. Well, it, 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 there, there were three Daticas, and their kids are all the three Daticas. Hey, we, we, we got one of them. <laughs> we one of them and uh, he's only a freshman. Yes. Uh, and one but he's years. he's got uh, he's getting some minutes, and he's you know he's getting some playing time. So those of you who are familiar with uh, Bergen County basketball will remember the Datica uh, name. And their leaders are Clarman Stone. Uh, Bradaric and Hicks are the two are the uh, four players that could score easily double figures in any game. Hicks is a transfer in, I think, right? I mean, I Hicks. think so. Yeah. And the the thing about uh, Dino Bradaric is the the kid that they lost earlier in the year to a season-ending uh, injury, and I think he was really uh, with them. They were a complete team, and I think Brian is a little bit surprised that they've been as successful as they have without Dino in the lineup, and I think it's a credit to the other kids. They've stepped up, done a great job in his absence, so uh, you know, credit to the uh, coaching staff and certainly to the <coughs> kids for coming along and uh, picking up the slack for him. And Brian, that was his 200th win. Just as went a to coach. 200. Yep. Mm -hmm. We're on his 200th, yes. He was at Rutherford, and then he was at Indian Hills, and now he's at, at St. Mary. Right. Uh, number 12, one of the nice surprises in the county this year is Ramsey with uh, Coach Kevin McGuire. Uh, out of the Big North Patriot Division, 13-1 and one at this point. Their only uh, loss was to Cliffside Park. 
uh, I'm sorry, was to Englewood. Um, uh, this this is is a nice story because Ramsey used to be one of the top teams in the county, but we're down for a while, and now they're back. Michael Pepper, I believe, might be their um, leading scorer. And they have and two kids that are transfers: uh, the kid Carroll and the kid Gaffney, that uh, are transfers in uh, that uh, have helped uh, put them back on the map. And I think, as as Paul mentioned, they haven't been an attorney since the year 2000, so uh, it's a nice uh, nice return for the Rams. It's always nice to see the teams, uh, you know, m making a comeback like that, and not only making a comeback, but 13 and one, having a real great year. 2000, right? You said the last time they yeah. played was 2000. Yeah. Yeah. It's been it's been a little while. Yeah. Okay, uh, number uh, 11 on the list is uh, the Garfield Boilermakers with Coach Chris Storms, who's been doing a great job. Uh, uh, NJIC uh, Colonial Division, another team that has only lost one game. And uh, as John pointed out before we started our show, they are the <laughs> only team who has, is undefeated in Bergen County. They the lost, their only loss was to <laughs> Wayne Valley. Uh, and they were the 20th seed last year. They beat St. Mary and uh, Rutherford, who's in the tournament. And uh, Chris does a great job down there. Um, a lot of times you look at the team and you see who they're playing and you say, well, this is going to be a real tough game. And all season long, we talked about Garfield. Uh, you know, they got a tough one tonight, they got a tough one tonight, and then here they are, 12-1. and one. Uh, Next on the list, we go to number 10, Creskill out of the NJIC Patriot Division and Mike Dodo. And uh, you can just pencil Creskill in pretty much every year. Uh, from Mike's mentor, uh, Marty Rivard, who is, of course, the winningest coach in Bergen County history, uh, to Mike taking over. Uh, absolutely the top to bottom, the most fundamentally sound team in the tournament. They do, you know, defensively, very physical, moving their feet, talking, communicating, hands are active, uh, getting through the screens if you want to try to screen them. Uh, offensively, they move the ball and move the ball until they find the open shot. They are not in a hurry to rush. Uh, they have some big guys who could score inside. They have real good ball handlers. And again, so fundamentally sound. 13-1, and one, and uh, their only loss was uh, to Ridgewood, who, is, of course, is in the tournament. Uh, uh, their defense is very difficult to figure out. Uh, and. I mean, what do you say about Cresco? They're there every year. Five outstanding players playing together. <laughs> well, and, and the two names that are going to jump out of the box almost every night on a regular basis, uh, Matt Flood and Sean Kelly, who uh, have been playing at Cresco for a while. They have uh, great veteran experience and leadership. And uh, again, I think uh, anytime you've got a couple of kids on a group one school that can uh, score the way they do, uh, but uh, as Paul said, their, their fundamentals are, are what really separate them when they're, uh, they're on the floor. Uh, they just do a terrific job, and uh, uh, again, a couple of kids that have been around for a while, uh, fun team to watch. Number nine is uh, Dwight Morrow out of the Big North American, coached by Don Osborne, who played for the Great Bogota team that won the uh, county tournament, played for Coach Mahoney. Uh, Englewood, and my 42 years in the county, has always been full of very quick, aggressive players. They're going to press you from the beginning of the game to the end. They're going to be very, very quick. It's difficult to prepare for the team because in practice, you can't, you can't uh, create that type of quickness that you'll see. You have to protect the basketball every second that the clock is running because they're going to be all over you. They're going to double team sometimes, they're going to run and jump sometimes, and they're going to fly once they get it. And uh, you better be quick and you better be moving your feet the whole game, and if you take a break, then you're probably going to take the ball out of the, ba uh, the bottom of the net because they're probably going to score. Um, they beat Ramsey, Cliffside Park, and St. Mary's, and they lost, they're, they're, uh, they lost to uh, Bergenfield, who's very good, Hackensack and Teaneck. Great. Big guy, Sidney Dawkins. Yeah. And Willie Woods will help out. <clears throat> very, very uh, tough team to play. Number eight is Ridgewood, Mike Troy, uh, out of the Big North Freedom Division. Uh, Ridgewood has had a couple of tough losses recently. Um, who did they play? 
St. Anthony? Yeah. They just played St. Anthony? That was a scrimmage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just played. And getting ready for the tournament, they just played St. Anthony. Warm up for the tournament. A little warm Money up. Man. Um, and before that, they played St. Joe's. So Ridgewood is obviously playing in their tough schedule. I think they're 10 and 5 at this point. Uh, they beat uh, Creskill and Hackensack. And um, uh, Tyler Porfido is their point guard. And Tyler doesn't, doesn't necessarily look to score much, but Tyler uh, does a real great job of uh, running the show and getting the ball to their scorers. And um, uh, uh, they play real good defense. They have, they're deep. They, they can run a lot of people out at you. And um, they've done real well, and as we said, a very tough schedule. I mean, if you're playing St. Anthony, it, um, it gets much tougher than that unless you're playing in the ACC. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, John and I talked about that game. We saw the scores. <clears throat> I said, oh, my God. And their wing players will uh, uh, shoot the three of their, their <laughs> slashers is what I thought that's, of. That's exactly how I uh, described uh, Tyler Sullivan, who's, uh, for, for the most part, is their leading scorer. Uh, Although they certainly do have other kids that can put up double figures, but uh, he, he again is a fun kid to watch play, uh, and, and he does slash to the basket every time he gets the opportunity. So. Again, you got to work real hard to keep them out of the uh, out of the paint. Number seven is uh, Hackensack, the high, uh, Hackensack, uh, coached by Coach Aaron Taylor, and uh, the Comets are uh, traditionally one of the top teams in the, in the county. They're in the Big North Freedom Division. Uh, they beat Englewood, Teaneck, and Bergenfield. Uh, lost to Rampo, Highlands, Ridgewood, and St. Joe's. And they are very tough physical guard play. Uh, you know, once you bring the ball over half court, you're going to run into some real physical, uh, quick defense. And Aaron does a wonderful job getting those kids ready to play. And uh, they don't really feature much of a... a a little bit of an inside game, but not as much as they may have in the past. But Hackensack is obviously one of the best teams around, and you know I, I, I'm, you know they're in a very tough division. They're fourth in their division, but that's that's a tough a tough division. They have two freshmen starting and a sophomore, yes. and one transfer in uh, from Richardson from right. Teaneck. Right. And you're going to be hearing about this team in the future, even this year too, I guess. But. Yeah, the Richardson kid is the kid that could just go off. I mean, he had a great game uh, when they beat uh, Teaneck, and when he's shooting the three, uh, it's, it's just uh, he, he drains it uh, uh, with regularity. So it'll be fun to watch uh, through the tournament as well. Number six is uh, Bergenfield, and uh, Bergenfield is coached by the aforementioned Marty Rivard, who has won 8,900 games, I think. <laughs> uh, Coach, Coach Krzyzewski from Duke just won his thousandth. I think he's a thousand behind Marty Rivard. Um, Marty uh, is the winningest coach in, in Bergen County history, and there's a reason why he's the winningest coach. When he was at Creskill and now that he's at Bergenfield, they play very, very solid basketball. They're good fundamentals. They move the ball very well on the offensive end. And they feature um, uh, two brothers, Haskins, Haskins brothers, uh, the younger one, I I'm drawing a blank. DJ. On DJ. DJ is a very, very good inside player. About 6'5", 6'4", 6'5". And if they feature him on the block and they can get him the ball, anybody in the county, no matter who you are, you're going to have your hands full. One is a quarterback and one is a uh, the, wide, receiver. wide receiver. Yeah, yeah. And I think the one who's the, uh, the younger one is the quarterback. Ju Correct. Uh, Giovanni Haskin. Giovanni is the quarterback. DJ is the big kid. So See, I like the, the name Giovanni. Yes, Giovanni. Right. <laughs> yes. uh, they lost uh, to Teaneck and Hackensack, and they've beaten St. Joe's, Englewood, uh, Dwight Englewood, and Tenafly. Uh, obviously one of the top teams and one of the uh, – I can, really can't say favorites because there's so many teams that could win the tournament, but I guess you could kind of figure them to be mm -hmm. one of the favorites. And they're a prototypical Marty Rivard team. They're very fundamental, they guard you, and they come out to play to win. Okay, down to the, uh, to the top five, and uh, number five is the Teaneck Highwaymen. Uh, Coach Jerome Smart has had a pretty good run since he's been there at Hackensack. Uh, he won... Uh, four tournaments in a row, as we mentioned at the beginning of the show. Four Pete, they're in the Big North National. They're in first place in their, in their league. They're undefeated in their league, and yet their record is seven and six. And one of the things that comes along with being as good as they are is they play 
uh, a big time schedule. You start to play uh, more and more teams outside the county, and uh, uh, you know every night you're bringing you know uh, a major opponent. In, in, you know th that you're going up against. Um, Leandre Washington, one of the top players in Bergen County. He can score from anywhere, and he's just a tremendous, tremendous player. Uh, this year, Teaneck really features. They they have for the last few years have really featured guard play, very very quick guards, and you can't leave any of them alone. And it's hard to cover them because they're extremely extremely quick. Well, the sidekick um, is Jack Quay James, right? For he's a freshman. Yeah. He's a freshman. And uh, uh, Levante, he's a sophomore, if I remember Washington right. Is Washington is Leandre is a sophomore. A sophomore. So sophomore. they'll be very good at guard. They'll be for a okay. Long time. Yeah, their guard play will be pretty good. Young but not inexperienced. No. Yeah. He right. played a lot last year in Washington. They know how to play. Uh, in the county, they beat Tenafly, Bergenfield, and Don Bosco, and they lost to uh, Hackensack and Bergen Catholic in the county. And Paul mentioned about their their schedule outside of the county. You know, they, oh. they play in these elite sl showcases. Uh, you know, they, they lost to Gil St. Bernard, who's certainly one of the top teams in the uh, in state, right. and to Eastside, who started the year as the number one team here in North Jersey. So they've, uh, they, they clearly do not <coughs> duck tough competition, and I think for them, uh, that just bodes well as they get into this time of the year where they're playing, uh, you know, tournament-tested uh, basketball. So anybody who wants to look at the record and say seven and six, Teaneck is down, <laughs> I, I would wait until the tournament's over and February see 26. where they are. <laughs> see if they don't win the fifth. Uh, and uh, yeah, and see where they are. See if they uh, five feet. <laughs> Nobody here is counting them out. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. No, you're not going to count that team out. No, no. Yeah. no. <laughs> uh, okay, down to the final four here, the top four anyway, top four seeds. Uh, Ramapo. Uh, Coached by Joe Sandberg of Bergen Catholic uh, and Princeton, if I right, Princeton or Penn? Penn. 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 Uh, Joe was a great athlete at Bergen and a great athlete in college, and he is just such a fabulous young coach. Does a great job with uh, with Ramapo. Um, they have so many good players. If you guys remember the last couple of years, he would run five more guys out, five more guys out, five more guys out, uh, and they all can play. They, they don't hardly uh, miss a beat. Their top player is, uh, well, their top scorer, I guess their leading scorer, is uh, Matt Lotka. And he's a junior. And, and he, uh, he had a great tournament last year. He can, he can shoot. Uh, he's their feature three-point shooter. One of the things I liked about Raripo, uh and they're in that freedom division. They're 12 and 2 at this point. One of the things I, I liked about uh, watching Raripo play was uh, they'll, they'll be almost methodical on offense. They'll move the ball, they'll move the ball, they'll move the ball. And when they catch the ball, they, they don't even look at the basket sometimes. And then all of a sudden, the ball's up and there's a three. Or all of a sudden, they're going to the basket and you're not ready for it. And they play extremely tough man-to-man -man and sometimes run and jump uh, defense, uh, full court. And uh, he's got a lot of players he could use. So uh, they don't get tired. He'll run somebody else in there. And uh, you know they are one of the top top choices. If you uh, you know you want to look at who we got, we said the tournament's open. Hey, um, I think when I've seen Ramapo play, what comes to mind is their um, their toughness, their physicality, and their consistency. <coughs> they play hard all the time, and uh, they just play really in the image of the coach. And we all saw him play, and they play just the way that Joe mm -hmm. played. So uh, they've all bought into what he's taught and they're doing a great job over there. I think that's the key thing is that the, the kids have bought in because uh, he, he really does subscribe to the uh, John Calipari uh, theme of coaching. He's, uh, he's got a blue team, he's got a white team, or he's got a green team and a white team at Ramapo. And uh, you know, they, they do shuttle uh, large groups of yeah. subs in at any one time and uh, the kids are always ready uh, for their number to be called, and, and I think that's a, a real credit to Joe's style of coaching, uh, the ability to, uh, to get all of these kids uh, to play as hard as they do. And stay in rhythm. Yep. Right. Which is a, a challenge yeah. when you play a lot of kids. Yeah, they're going to be they're going to be one of the toughest outs in the tournament. Number three, the uh, Crusaders from Bergen Catholic, coached by Billy Armstrong, who's been doing a great job there for the last few years. One of the top teams around, and yet they're they're third in the Big North United. Um, 
<coughs> we were talking before about football, how that tough that league is in football. It's pretty tough in basketball, too. Um, they've got some, they got a couple of 6'8 kids, um, uh, De Francesca. Go ahead, John. Go ahead, John. Yeah, Francesco Oliva. Yeah, Oliva. There you go. Jeez, for me to say. He waited all night to say yeah. that. <laughs> From Italy, they, they uh, uh, just going to St. Joe's, uh, Philadelphia, he's at this a, point. He's a right. Division one player, and you can see how. Uh, He's grown by leaps and bounds from last year. You could see the talent there and the ability to play, and now all of a sudden he's just uh, blossomed. And mm -hmm. when they run everything through him, uh, their team is just super effective. He's got soft hands. He's got great vision. He's a terrific passer. Just a very well-rounded basketball player. He just player. needed last year. He just needed a little polish just to yeah. get him to that next well, level. Well, he needed. came from Italy. I mean, that yeah. couldn't have been an easy move, and he's acclimated uh, himself. Yeah. But he's a joy to watch. So yeah. when they run things through him, they're really, really tough team to but beat. then they have Justin Salem yeah. who can shoot the three he had nine in one game eight in another game yeah, he's a sniper yeah. <laughs> he can missed shoot. inside missed outside yeah. Yeah. Um, they uh, played uh, in a tour where was the tournament in California that they played they were on the West Coast they were on the West Coast they played a team from Utah which and that's another thing that that puts a little bit of a strain on the committee a little extra research when we got to figure out how good are those teams well they lost to Mission Bay 63-61 right uh, and they also by the way they beat Teaneck by 23 yes you know once they get it cranked up yeah they started their year with a great win off uh, off the uh, bat right off the bat they beat Eastside who had been the consensus preseason number one so uh, you know they've uh, They've had a nice season, and I'm sure they're looking forward to the Jamboree. I'm, I'm oh. certain that they're. Well, and they have a coach who has a wealth of knowledge. He's a hardworking guy at it. He was a great player himself, yep. and we forgot to mention Thank he's an alum. He's an he alumnus of Burn Catholic, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he played a championship game. He's <laughs> you know a terrific high school player, and he was yeah. a Division One player at Davidson. And the team is shaping up nicely. <laughs> they're going to be a tough out. Yep. Going to mention all those Burden Catholic alums, you know. That's it. That's it. <laughs> be here all night. <laughs> Uh, okay, number two, uh, the second seed is uh, St. Joe's, uh, the Green Knights of St. Joe's, coached by another guy who went to the school, just like Billy Armstrong. This is back at his alma mater, so Mike Darty has been for some time now, and Mike has always done a great job up there. He's a class guy. He does everything the right way. They're in the Big North United, and they're in second place in their uh, division. Uh, they've... Um, uh, they beat, let's say, they beat Bergen Catholic, they beat Rampo, and they beat Hackensack. They lost to Bergenfield and Don Bosco. Um, St. Joe's, when you see them play, uh, they are very athletic. They're very strong. They're very physical. They can jump. They're very quick. And Mike just gets the most out of them uh, every single year. And this year, with a little bit of size, more size than he had a couple years ago, his son is on the team. Um, uh, they're very, very tough, very tough. I saw a great game when they uh, beat uh, Rampo at Rampo. Um, th that, you know, that was a game that was a real collision game. There was a, a lot of athleticism and physicality in, in that game. That came last year. Uh, Bergen played St. Joe's. John and I mentioned it when we did the game. I think it was in the quarterfinals. It's probably the best defensive game I've ever yeah. seen that, uh, that he had against Bergen Catholic last year. That was his best game, I think, ever as a coach. I, I said that to him. Yeah. Well, he just got his 400th <laughs> win the other night, so he's had a few wins yes. along the way. Mm -hmm. uh, so to put, to, to put that one at the top, Mike would probably have a tough time putting uh, any of those uh, wins True. at the top. But, uh, you know, again, to get to 400, uh, uh, what a great uh, career he's had. And their other loss, we mentioned their two losses in the county, but their other loss is to Roselle Catholic, who is now the consensus uh, by four points by four yeah. consensus number one team in the state so uh, yeah. so again you, you talk about these teams and how they've kind of geared themselves up with the kind of competition that they've gone out and played leading up to the tournament uh, and against Bergenfield Bergenfield made 19 out of 20 foul shots yeah, yeah. to beat St. Joe's yeah. in that game so you know they, they, have, they, they have, can play John they have a very um, experienced nucleus and when I saw them play, they have excellent team chemistry. And there's experience there, and then there's a couple of new kids. He's got a freshman coming off the bench uh, who's just a terrific young guard. Is it Nate Garvey? No, no. Nate Garvey's, uh, he might be their leading scorer. You got McGuire, McGinless. Um, 
name escapes me. Yeah, right, yeah, but no, he's, I just uh, saw him. Yeah. But he's 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 a jet, and you're going to see him perform well in this county for the next four years. But they have very very good team chemistry, and they're hard nosed as always. So. Uh, watch out for St. Joe's. It's funny how you remember a game. I remember that game, St. Joe's um, and uh, Bergen Catholic last year, and the, I think it was the quarters, and uh, St. Joe's, what a defense they put up. And I think uh, Bergen was a three last year, and St. Joe's, if I'm correct, was a six from last um, year. Last so, year, Bergen was three, and Joe's was six. Mm -hmm. there you there you go. Go. All right, Larry. All right, on top of that. I just feel you know, like certain games, I mean, like, you guys, there's certain was, games that just <clears throat> you remember, mm -hmm. and uh, that game just... Well, unbelievable defense he put up, and they played very, very well. They played very well that game. It was a good game. It was a very good game. All right. Okay, and Drum the last, <laughs> last but not least is the uh, uh, Don Bosco Prep <coughs> and the Ironmen, and coached by uh, longtime great, great coach Kevin DeVario out of the Big North United, and they are in first place in that division. Uh, they are 13-2. and two. Uh, they're four and zero in the division. They lost to Teaneck and to uh, Bedford Academy from New York. Um, I mean, what do you say about the top seed when they got a great coach and they got a lot of talent? You know, uh, you you could say that, that since they're the top seed, they're the team to beat. But uh, as we started the show, we said that there really isn't a clear cut. But somebody has to be number one, and certainly their resume. Uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. supports their uh, their top seed. Well, you went through the 22 schools, <laughs> and I'm more confused now as who I think <laughs> is the top, who's, a, uh, who's going to win this. You made a, a great uh, case for every one of these schools, and the people watching this show tonight can go to the games and say, let's watch this kid, let's watch that kid, let's watch this. And it really is, it is wide open here. And if a team comes in, plays their A game, they're going to win, and they're going to win maybe easily. So this is really, really wide open. And, and it, we say this every year, any team could win. But I really mean it. This year, mm. looking at this from my point of view, and I'm sure John's the same way, almost any team here could get, get on a run and, and win this. And that would be, uh, you know, you like to have those games. You know, in the NCAA, you get those schools that make those runs and they get deep into the, into the tournament. It just makes the tournament even bigger and better. People are talking about it. Call it they talk it around the water cooler. What about that ex, that team or that team? So you, you, something like this, just uh, it's fantastic. And you are going to get great games. Mm. There's going to be great games here when you start. Now, we're going to start um, uh, the games uh, tomorrow. I guess we, we're going to call it round one, January 31st. Uh, there will be games at three locations. Them. We put it up there on TV. Um, at Bergen Field, Old Tapan, and at Bergen Catholic, and um, Richfield at Northern Highlands at the 12 o'clock game at Bergen Field, 1.30 Dwight Englewood versus Tenafly, and then at Old Tapan you have uh, Rutherford versus Ramsey, 2.30 Cliffside Park versus St. Mary's, and then at uh, Bergen Catholic a little later in the day, which is good because people can, you know, the real right. aficionados can run from one game to another. I know you guys are going to run, but there are people that will go to the various sites Absolutely. to watch these games. You have uh, my favorite school, Woodridge and Garfield. <laughs> I put my stickers on when I go watch them watch them play. And then um, Hasbrook Heights and Marwan Paul, you mentioned what a great matchup that is just by style. So that's that's tomorrow. And then... Tomorrow night, you will sit down as a committee and determine the round of 16, which we'll get into in a minute, which will be played on the 7th and 8th of uh, February at Northern Highlands in Tenafly. You will determine what schools will go to each, uh, uh, e each one of those venues, correct? Correct. And those times are going to be at 11 o'clock. Help me here. 11, 1. 11, 12, 30. And then uh, two and four o'clock. Two and uh, two thirty four <laughs> four o'clock. Oh, you you send it yeah, to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, we did. Let's see. Let's be let's be accurate here. We're going eleven and twelve thirty, and then two thirty and four. Those are the times. Both days at both uh, days, Saturday at, and uh, Sunday. Uh, Highlands and then at uh, Tenafly. Uh, and before you get off of tomorrow, <laughs> I think uh, you know uh, Paul alluded to it at the outset. Uh, we really couldn't do this without the cooperation of the different venues that we go to and, and the athletic directors who are in place at those venues. So again, we really want to extend a, a thank you uh, tomorrow right off the bat uh, to Tom Cashel at uh, Old Japan, Jack McGovern at uh, Bergen Catholic, and uh, Tom Curry at Bergenfield because they essentially uh, invite us into their gyms and they provide uh, working staff, et cetera, uh, to work the games. 
and uh, you know we're we're really reliant on uh, those three schools tomorrow, and then the next week uh, the same thing. Bob Williams at Northern Highlands, uh, and Dan Kilday at Tenafly, uh, sites that we've been really kind of using for the last several years, and uh, it's it's really up to uh, uh, up to them to kind of stage it. We're the, we're there bringing in the uh, uh, the teams. But uh, we're so thankful to those uh, five uh, venues for uh, offering up the space. And then you also have going. Let's take this. You got to uh, you go to Ramapo. You've been uh, we've been up there last couple of years. They treat us very well. I know they treat you very well. Mm -hmm. So going up to Ramapo College for the uh, the quarters and the uh, semis and the finals up there. They yep. do a great job up there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So um, one one thing I'd like to slide in uh, the uh, profits that we make on the tournament go to the. Uh, BCCA Lou Lands a lot of scholarship fund, and uh, the BCCA gives a uh, $500 scholarship to um, each of the uh, schools, each of the 55 schools in Bergen County. And the Jamboree, uh, traditionally annually, is the number one funder funder of that uh, scholarship. That's great. And all like we, so we, like we spoke with Leon, everything is for the kids. Basically, all the work, everything is being done. It all comes down to the kids. Uh, the the money goes to the kids, and the the playing where they play, the excitement being in the tournament. It's all it's all for them. Absolutely. So let's just go over this one more time, Paul, so everybody has it straight in their minds. <laughs> everything begins tomorrow on the 31st on the venues that we just mentioned, uh, Ulta Pan, Bergen Catholic, and... Um, Bergenfield. 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 And then everything, you, the committee will get together. Yeah, we have it and up over here now. You can see it now. on the screen. Yeah, it's, it's, the tw it's the 31st, not the 21st. Yeah. That's a mistake there, but we, we'll, we'll cross that out and take care of it. <laughs> our, uh, Nobody it, will see that. Yeah, well, I will. <laughs> <laughs> I will. We'll cross that out. Maybe you didn't see that. No one saw that. <laughs> 31st. We'll um, make up a three-pointer. Nobody will see yeah, that. Yeah, we'll Come see on. that. And then the, the, we start on, on the 7th and the 8th at... Uh, uh, Northern Highlands and, and Tenafly, and yep. then we move over to on the f very important the uh, 14th and 15th will be the quarters. Paul, just explain. It's not f used to be in the past four games. But four now games, yeah. We're going uh, two on Saturday. Uh, that's the 15th. 14th, 15th, 14th, 14th and then two on uh, Sunday, 16th at Rampo College, and then we come back the following Sunday for uh, the 23rd for the uh, semis, which is always a great day when you get down to the to the final four, and um, then we got the finals on the twenty uh, seventh, twenty sixth, twenty sixth, Thursday the twenty, Thursday the twenty sixth at Ramapo. You know what I'm doing? I'm looking at my bracket here, and it's last year's. It's bracket. last year's bracket. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah that's I, I probably why. Well, you know why I got this out though, because you talked about how anybody could make a run and how much fun that gets to be. We had um, uh, mm. last year. We had Glen Rock make a run. Uh, win a few games in St. Mary's. St. Mary's, Mary's was uh, wasn't that the year before St. Yeah, Mary's? St. Mary's. St. <laughs> Mary's yeah. made a run the year before, so we can get one of those uh, one of those smaller schools to make a run, and uh, and you know that that just adds to the to the tournament. It's 59th tournament. It was started in 1951. Uh, there was a couple of years where we uh, we couldn't have it for uh, uh, state regulation reasons, numbers of games. Um, but I, it's one of the oldest tournaments of any sport around, uh, and uh, we have so much fun doing this. Um, but uh, we have to pay tribute, as as Ed said earlier, to Mickey Cochran and and some of the guys who uh, way back when started this uh, this uh, great event. Ed Strohmeyer, we started working Ed with Ed Strohmeyer, the great Ed, Ed Strohmeyer. So we go back a long time. This is the, uh, here we go, we fixed it. See, we fixed it. We Nobody have, saw we, with mistake. Well, mistake. Larry did. You needed glasses. Oh, I made him, you know, what, I don't have problem. my glasses. I do believe it was I, a three all the way along. I don't I think agree with good. you. That vitamin D, I need more vitamin D. I need my carrots. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, so, well, and if I could, just one last shout sure. out. Uh, uh, Greg Matura does a great job covering basketball for uh, Bergen County. But behind the scenes, so, I mean, besides seeing his work mm -hmm. in the paper, Behind the scenes, uh, Greg keeps track of all the games, all the scores of all the teams in the county. And he sends out the spreadsheet every week, which we have now incorporated into our bank of uh, data to make our decisions. He sends it out every week to every coach. 
Speaking that's of that's a, that's a labor of I love. do that. They should just send it to me then. <laughs> I won't have to do all that. <laughs> you, you'll have to get on his. You'll uh, get on. Holy speak to Greg. Man, I didn't know that. You, 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 I do that every you're day. You have to get on Twitter. And you see, you're doing all this work, and he's got it. As I was away for 14 days, I I had to borrow the newspapers. My wife says, "What are you doing?" I was in there for two days. We invited you before before we get off of Greg. I've got to say, uh, this is my, f I, I'm still relatively new at this. I've only been on the committee five years. And uh, Paul is, uh, is absolutely amazing when it comes to these, uh, the spreadsheets and the statistics. He talks about Greg's contribution. And Jim but, McConville. Uh, and Jim McConville, but uh, quite honestly, no one <laughs> contributes the amount of background that we use week in and week out uh, than Paul. He has this. I, I, I marvel when he sends this out week every week because he does piggyback a little bit on what Greg does. Sure, Greg but does. in addition to that, he's, uh, he's adding and uh, these spreadsheets move out to, you know, it's broken down by the league, it's broken down by the, uh, the group. And uh, uh, we walk in on Wednesday night to this selection meeting with so much background material and uh, it's really uh, a credit to the time and effort that Paul puts in uh, leading up to that uh, that selection night. And so now I, that he's retired, expect more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I did. I sent a note out to the guys. I said, "Here's my third update today. Uh, you know, you guys must be, you guys must be really upset that I'm retired now." Uh, we invited Greg to be part of the panel because he's so intricately involved in in basketball. But he couldn't uh, come tonight. Right. He had other things he had to take care of and attend to. So I always told him, "You're always available. Maybe we'll we'll see him during the Ram during Ramapo, and we do." Uh, up at Ramapo and, and all the uh, the games will be. We do want to mention the Bergen County Coach Association. This is our first announcement, John. Yes. The Bergen County Coaches Association and the Jamboree Committee would like to thank the following for their support of this wonderful tournament. Sports time. To the doctor, which John Francola signed up. <laughs> I'm last getting year. better. <laughs> you getting better. His SATs went from 321 to 324. <laughs> 324. <laughs> 324. All right. Three points. You got pretty good. You got, All the, right. you got that Italian question right. <laughs> <laughs> Mountain Valley Spring Water, Ring City Youth <laughs> Basketball, and Washington Community Television. That's us. WCTV. If you don't know Washington Community Television is signing my name is only 400 points. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's why I got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's like 400 lira. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Lear, that's the only thing I got, to Lear. <laughs> well, we want to thank you for taking time coming up here and uh, doing the preview show, as you've always done. It's a pleasure, like I said, to all of you. All the guys here, the gang of WCTV, we look forward to the uh, the doing the Jamboree. It's one of our highlights. We get such great reviews. <laughs> People love watching it. They love watching the kids play. Uh, they enjoy it. Uh, many people come up to us during the game and they ask when it's going to play again. They watch it live. When is it going to be on? We want to see it and we'll tell them when it's going to be on. So we want to thank you, all of you here and the other committee members who couldn't make it. We want to thank you for inviting <coughs> us. What's going on there? What's that? High school basketball game. What's that? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we got the high school basketball. They're putting it up on the air that'll air through February and into March. We'll be airing these things. So we just want to thank you, uh, all of you. And thank for, you guys for, thank you. for your 23 yeah, for years of, uh, of support. And, and it always mm -hmm. makes it a lot of fun. You know, when we watch the... Uh, the NCAA selection show, yeah. and now with the football selection yeah. show, we just watch it and we just smile because it's it's kind you of you do a better job. It's kind of, well, I don't know about oh, that. Oh, it is a better job. I'm they have, to, they have similar restrictions and who can play against who. Right. We can't. This team can't play that team because they played already. You know, it is. It, you really didn't mention that tonight, but in the past you did, and really to select and get the. The 22 team, because you have all these, uh-uh, wait a minute, they play against each other. No, you got to move them up, you got to move them down. And then people call up and say, well, how come my team should have been a 6, I'm a 12? Right. And then they have to answer those questions. Well, you know, John, it, it, it was almost, uh, I, I say, satisfying, gratifying, whatever, when I listened to uh, the, the president or chairman of the NCAA uh, tournament committee when he stands up on ESPN and he talks about well you know Duke had to move here and, and you know North Carolina and Duke couldn't play in the first round and because that's what we yeah. have to do uh, real quick uh, you know once when, when we get the the teams picked and we start to seed them 
we then have to make sure that uh, in the first game, could be first round, could be second round, that a team plays, that they do not play against a league opponent. And we make every effort to make sure that they are not playing against somebody that they played, even if it was an independent opponent. And uh, what, what game were we talking about? Were they, we were lucky that they could have played back-to-back. -back Cliffside <laughs> Park and Ramsey uh, are scheduled to play uh, on... Uh, well, they're not I think they just play. play. Well, it, they we, just got. We had a we had a first round matchup that uh, <laughs> they could have been repeated, and uh, yeah, we we do. We we make sure uh, on our spreadsheets that we don't uh, uh, we don't get into that bind. Mm -hmm. So uh, so it's uh, it it does go to the scope of a little bit more research and investigation than, than simply plotting 22 teams. So there's a little bit it's more. It's a lot than, difficult a lot than what it looks like behind the screen. When you get behind the scenes, you say, my God, that really is tough. It's like everything else. But you don't all, know the X's and uh, O's. But all the high school basketball fans now get to second guess us. That's it. Well, of course. <laughs> of course. They, no matter what, they're going to second guess you. <laughs> I want to thank you again. Thank you for inviting WCTV again to do the games. We, we really, really enjoy it. We have a ball doing it. We enjoy dealing with the committee, with the coaches, the players, the fans. It's just, it's just wonderful. It, to us, it's a labor of love. Like what you do, you love it. We love doing this, and we love covering the gym. We look forward to it. I can't believe I said goodbye to you <laughs> in February. It's not like yesterday. It's not like yesterday. It's going to get close as you get older. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what we're going to do is if they're ready back then, you can Shake your head. We're going to try. We're going to go off showing the uh, 2014 final between uh, Don Bosco Prep and Teaneck. We'll show a little bit of that. We're going to show that, Emily. They're, they're going to say yes or no or what? Are they going to? We have to sit here and kill about 30 seconds while they decide if they're going to put that up. Well, it gives me a chance to say goodbye to everybody. I want to thank you again. And yes, we're going to show the game. So for the entire crew at WCTV here, for the committee chairman, Leon Steinberg. Paul Pugliese and Nick Rama, I want to thank you. This is Lila Ferry with John Francola. Say goodnight, and we'll see you on the road to Ramapo College. He has over his head to Sweeney. Jorgensen pulls it out. Jorgensen gets inside, wants the ball, knocked away, taken down by Sweeney. Rivera has it inside to Jorgensen, to Sweeney, and a foul. Really good pass by uh, first Rivera to Jorgensen and then Jorgensen to Sweeney, that interior pass. Great luck. So Sweeney will go to the line. He will get two shots. Time's running out. He's got to make some. Misses the first one. Davis is in for Teaneck. Always hard, always hard as a shooter when you miss that first one. You want to make that first one. So hopefully Tom Sweeney can get this one down. Green Wheels comes out for Teaneck. Must have an offense defense going here, Larry. Sweeney misses both of them. Rivera with the ball. Rivera and Whistle are going to call a timeout by Coach Smart. Rivera was in a little trouble back there. Let's see what they call a 30 second timeout or full timeout. Full timeout. Full timeout. All right, we'll come back 55 52. We are back with one minute and one second to go. Teaneck will run, put the ball in. I don't think they want to foul De Jesus there. Well, not yet. You don't want to foul that early. Ball is oh. tipped out of bounds. Great effort by Sweeney and Jorgensen to try and save that. Smart didn't like Coach Smart didn't like that play. Yeah, 51 seconds. Don Bosco, uh, Teenex leading by three. Big basket of Teenex. Teenex doesn't get it. need to score, so we'll see how patient they are. Stolen. Oh. Bosco's had a few. Teenex had a trouble. Dole almost stolen by Washington. Out of bounds. Twice, three times now, Teaneck has had the ball in. They had a tough yeah, time getting it in. They did. Don Bosco's really defending the out-of-bounds play well. Very well. 45.8 seconds to go. Davis will check in. 
Brown will sit down. Sweeney. Puts it out, Illy. Craddock, 40 seconds to go. Jorgensen backing up. Good defense, 30 seconds. Jorgensen puts it up, no good. Comes down, Jorgensen with the rebound, no good. Washington and foul by Jorgensen. With 23.8 seconds to go. And Teaneck leading 55 to 52. Teaneck did an excellent job taking away the three-point attempt. They forced Jorgensen to drive. It was a hard drive. He missed a tougher shot in the lane. And an excellent rebound by Washington, the five-foot-nine freshman guard, just grabbed that ball hard. Well, this will make it a two-possession game if he makes one of them. Oh, he barely snuck that one in. That, that <laughs> so Washington makes one, 56-52. That's a big free throw. Makes it a two-possession game, Larry. It's a four-point game now. 57-52, five-point game. Jorgensen, got to get it up. Bosco's got to score quickly. Sweeney pushes it out. Rivera, no good. Rebound, taken down by, looks like Rivera. He hands to Washington with 10.7 seconds to go, and it looks as though, it looks as though Teaneck will make history here tonight and win their fourth state championship. De Jesus will go on the line. And Coach Smart is saying, don't foul, don't foul. Oh, there's a life here, there's a life for Botsko. Rivera stops, shoots, no good, banging around, still banging around. Up front to Greenlees, he's gonna put it up. He puts it in and that's it. Easy, hey, hey, easy, hey. 59, hey. no, 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 52. No, 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 no. Jerome. The game is over and the crowd goes wild. As Chinek defeats Don Bosco. 59 to 52 and capture their fourth straight jamboree title. They make history. History was made tonight.